So I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and y'all are ready for the new year to start. We're up here in Ohio and we're about to go to one of my favorite places, my happy place. We don't have these down south. Dude, I don't know if y'all have ever been in here. This place is pretty cool. But so we're gonna have lunch real fast and then I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about suspension and videos. I do a lot of uh, videos on suspension. I get a ton of questions about people sending me videos asking me what I think they should be doing. And so I'm gonna talk to y'all a little bit about that and I'm gonna show y'all kind of what I look at, what the videos, the best angles that I think are the best and you know, what I usually try to look for. All right, y'all stay tuned. Let's go get something to eat first though. Okay, for me, this is an angle that I get a lot of times. People are on the passenger side of the car and they're stooped down here. And this just is not a good angle. And the reason why is the natural body roll of the vehicle. When the car takes off, when the trans brake is released, the nitrous is activated and the boost is coming on. Everybody has anti-roll bars on their cars, but the, the car, the truck, it is naturally, it is going to pick up on the driver's side more and the passenger side is going to squat. So it makes it really difficult to be able to see exactly what the suspension is doing. A lot of times people will look at only the right side of the vehicle and they'll say, okay, well, the car is squatting or the car is lifting. And typically on the right side, you don't see lift at all. You only see squat. And so even if the car has a lot of anti-squat, I'm gonna show you a little bit later in a couple of the videos, uh, a couple comparisons. And what will happen is uh, it's on my car, the driver's side, you can clearly see the separation. And on the passenger side, you won't see any separation. So that makes people a little confused. It makes people, you know, do some, some changes that might not be necessary. So this is just a combination of a whole bunch of videos that I had throughout the year. Just, uh, you know, you can get this video anytime you're at the track. Most people let you on the starting line or get close enough to where you can see stuff that's happening. And so, you know, it's really important to, to be able to do this and get video. You gotta get video. So anytime you're at the track, you gotta have at least one person that is dedicated to getting good video for you. Without the good video, you know, you'll, you're just shooting in the dark, you're making changes, you're making guesses. And we just shoot all of our video typically with an iPhone and you can slow it down. And that's what all of this footage is from that I'm showing you today. It's from an iPhone, I'm sure Androids are the same way, but you can slow the footage down and you can see exactly what is happening. Okay, so watch my car here. This is on the right side, of course, passenger side. The car has about 170% anti-squat, so it should be separating violently. Now, I have a good anti-roll bar on the car, but the car still body rolls some. So what's gonna happen is it squats, it looks like in the video. Now, from the left side over here, you can clearly see that it is separating. Okay, we're gonna slow this down a little bit. So you wanna be looking at the top of the rim in relation to the fender. This is where you're gonna see the squat or the separation. Don't worry about the bottom of the tire right now. All of them are gonna look like they squat initially from where it squashes the tire. But to look at the suspension, you wanna look at the rim against the fender and see what it actually looks like it's doing. And so on the right side there, you can see it tried to separate down, but then it, it come down, the body rolled over and it squashed it closer. Now check this out on the, the driver's side. It is pretty clear and pretty evident when the trans brake is released, the first movement of the rim is down. And so you start increasing the distance between the top of the rim and the fender well. And so that's how you can tell if you're above or below 100% anti-squat. 
Now shots play a huge role in this as well. So you need to look at this video and be able to decide does the extension need to be softer or tighter. So here it is a little bit more in slow motion. You can see the difference from side to side. It's very clear. This is the exact same pass and it shows you the difference. It really is amazing to me seeing the left side of the car versus the right side of the car on the exact same pass. You can see the first movements. If you only had the video from the left side, I think that's the correct side you need to be on and you're going to make good changes. If you only had video from this right side, you're going to be shooting in the dark in my opinion. So it's very important. So check this out. So this is just some random video when I was at the track. Always good information, good stuff you can learn by taking a look at other cars. So this is a car, it was a foot brake car. If you'll notice when it starts coming up on the on the converter, the tire starts wrinkling. And of course, a slick is typically gonna want a little bit less than 100% anti-squat or maybe right at 100%. And a radial tire is gonna want more than 100%. It's gonna to wanna to separate violently to, to plant the tire. But this car right here, it, it, it's awesome. Watch the, the Just watch the video in slow motion, it's crazy. The way it goes into tire shake and you can see the tire moving there again slow motion video if you're able to slow it down you can really get some good ideas of what is supposed to be happening and it's just amazing watching this stuff so check this car out he's on a radial and the first instinct is for the rim to separate but then the body quickly falls so that may mean the compression on the shock is not quite tight enough or it could mean that there's some other issues that are happening in the, the rear suspension. Maybe it's bottoming out on something or maybe it's hitting something and causing it to spring back. Now the next car coming up, this is a bigger tire car on slicks and you can see it kind of stays the same with the rim in relation to the body. And uh, you know, that's what typically what a slick wants. You can't overpower a sidewall on a slick, otherwise you have problems. Now this car coming up, this is a radial car and it separates, it's got a lot of anti-squat, but watch the sidewall on the tire. Watch what it's doing. It's wrinkling and then releasing, wrinkling and then releasing. That's either a problem with the shock settings or it could be in the suspension itself. Another radial car coming up and this one looks like it initially hooks, but then it kicks the tire pretty hard. So they may have just missed their tune up a little bit. Maybe they were expecting the track to be a little stickier. Okay, here's my car coming up again. Pro bracket radial, 15 pounds of air pressure about 170 percent anti-squat watch the tire watch the sidewall it stays wrinkled the whole time launching a car is a combination of rear suspension rear shocks front travel and front shock settings it's all playing a part in launching not the best angle to see this but watch what happens it leaves on motor nitrous hits and it really upsets the car and it goes into tire shake but you can see what's happening what's trying to happen in the back of the car it's trying to separate Here's another video of my car. Car takes off, separates, wrinkles the tire. Tire stays wrinkled. Uh, front end could have probably used a little bit more travel in this one. You can see it got a little bit of tire shake out there, but overall it wasn't too bad and it was able to drive through it. If it's not tire shaking too bad, sometimes it can make it through it. Now check Joey's car out. This thing is on radials, no B locks, and it wrinkles the tire and it stays wrinkled the entire time. And so it starts doing a little minor wheelie here and he was able to pedal the car and get it down. So he had to do some front tie down in order to keep the front end down. This pass looks like the track might have just went away, but look at the tire shake and wobble. It tried to hook and go, but it just overpowered the track. Now this car is perfect. It's got extension, it's got separation, but it's very slow and controlled. And you can see it's separating and it's getting further and further apart, the wheel from the fender wheel as it goes down track. Ace was having issues, but in this video, you can clearly see that it was separating and it had a lot of anti-squat but it still was kicking the tires. What he found was happening on his, his drive shaft was bottoming out or topping out on the drive shaft loop. And so that's what would cause it to spin every time 60 foot out. Now this is a big tire bracket car on slicks and you can see the anti-squat on this one is a little less than 100% and it squats just slightly, but it takes off and goes. Next car coming up is a big tire bracket car as well way less than 100% anti-squat. You can see the rim and tire going up into the fender wheel. So the tire is being absorbed into the body of the car. Now this car is a little bit of an oddball from what you normally see. Big tires on slicks, but it really has a lot of anti-squat and the back end of the car really rises and it really separates from the rim. But the car clearly works. It's a great working car. It looks like it's doing fantastic, exactly what he wants it to do. My car again, same anti-squat, 170%, but the extension on the shock was a lot looser. Look how violently it separates.
front wheels barely on the ground. At any given time, if the front end would have come down and violently hit the surface, it would have upset the car and it would have probably went into tire shake or tire spin. So having the right boost curve is also important. Now that was some tire shake that it was able to drive through, but watch it in slow motion. Watch the tire distort, grab, and let go of the track. That is usually very hard on parts. Now here's Brian's taking off. Take a look at the tire. It separates a little bit, but not a lot. Just a tad over 100% anti-squat and the car worked. It stayed about neutral as it was taken off. My car again, lots of anti-squat on this one. Violent separation, front wheels dangling, and all the weight staying on the back. So typically a slick wants to have a little bit of slip, a little bit of give. You can see this one dead hooked. And when they get a dead hook and they're expecting it to slip, this is what typically happens, a big wheelie. Now this is a big tire grudge car, Junior Bissett. Look how this one squats and the tire and wheel go up into the body of the car, perfect. Okay, here's Randy's car. It looks like it initially squats, but that is the tire squashing. And then you can see the anti-squat lifting the back of the car as it goes down track. Okay, this is my latest setup, about 127% anti-squat. You can see it still wants to separate a little, but not a lot. I had a lot of travel in the front end, and the car sat back on the tires and went down pretty good. All right, guys, well, that was it. I just wanted to show you all a little bit of my footage that I got through the year and show you the importance of getting video, getting data, and looking at it closely. And, you know, every car is a little bit different. Uh, what works on one car clearly may not work on another car. But by looking at other cars and looking at their information, what they're doing at the track, you can probably get your car working better. But knowing, you know, what your anti-squat is or about where it is, you know, in your shock settings and seeing what the tire is doing. If the tire is bouncing, sometimes the car will get upset if the front end comes down too quickly. Sometimes if the shocks, if the compression is not tight enough, it will separate, but then it will go back into the car. And then when the tire goes up, it'll bounce the tire like a basketball. And so, you know, then that's problematic. So it's, you got to look at the video though. So you got to have good footage. You got to have good video. Um, giving them my input. I'm not a, you know, a professional. I mean, this is just my opinion. You know, opinions are, you know, everybody's got one. So <laughs> it is what it is. But this is what I do and this is what I look. Get video from the from the driver's side, not the passenger side. I like to see everybody go fast. 2020 is coming up. I hope to be killing it in the no prep world. I may be a duck. We'll see what happens. Y'all go fast, get some wind lights. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.